And Alabama trip was amazing, guys. If anybody is on our Hardcore Christianity Facebook page, please go to that page and check out the, the, the testimony of this young lady who came out from Indiana. She got healed from scoliosis. It was amazing. I saw her from the beginning because she recognized, the, um, recognized me and Kelly from Facebook. She's asked for prayer a few times from her. Her and her daughters all got healed and delivered. And her grandson got delivered too. Um, I didn't get to witness that, but I was a witness to uh, being able to pray for her with Kelly and a, another young lady from our phone ministry. And Kelly was working on her, working on her. And I was like, man, I want to get in on this because it looks good, right? And I recognized that she had that. She was like this, like literally like that. And then um, once Kelly started working on that, she got a lot of wounds out and all that. And then um, finally, man, it was just like go time. She's like, let's pray for that back. And she rebuked uh, scoliosis. And that young lady, man, we sat her down. Her leg grew out and her hip straightened out. And it was just amazing that scoliosis was healed. So praise God. I just want to also, amen. Uh, we have ch children's deliverance coming up uh, Saturday, June 2nd at 10 o'clock. Bring your babies, bring your grandbabies, and uh, we look forward to blessing the, the little babies on that day, okay? So praise God. Huh? Preteens, preteens too. Oh, thank you for donating the food. Who was that? We want to recognize you. Praise God. Honor them. We honor you. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you saw those. <laughs> Praise God. We have food for the cupboards at the healing house. So thank you, Jesus. He blessed us. Thank you, Lord. All right, Brother Mike. You're up. Testing. Is that on? All right, uh, that's preteens only on the uh, children's deliverance service coming up this summer. We have them, uh, the first Saturday of every month during the summer. They're, they're wonderful services. Uh, it's easier to get demons out of kids than it is adults because they don't have all the crappy baggage adults have. And... Uh, all you got to do is get permission of the parents. And then you're in. You go right after the spirit. And uh, their angels do always behold the faith of father. And uh, so kids are, deliverance for kids is, is good. The only bad part about it is some of the kids are manifesting. So they'll jump around and run around like that. And sometimes we have to take them in the prayer room and have a couple of guys hold them down. But that's the small percent of it. You know, that's not the, you know, typical one. So it usually goes great. All right, seminar coming up on sex. No children allowed at that seminar. I'm on the radio every day on this, this radio station, Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday. There it is. And then I'm always on the radio on the Internet. On Omni FM, you can catch it off the website. I also started this one. This one is going fantastic. I went from 27 listeners the first week to over four or 500 the second week, and it keeps gone up every week. It's a secular radio, internet radio thing. It's not a Christian, so I thought I would try something a little different. So far, it's worked out. So if something works, I keep doing it. If it doesn't, I bag it. And I don't get tied into anything. If I make a mistake, I just bag it and go on to the next mistake. <laughs> just keep going. Got to keep going. You know, we're not in the mood for suicide, so you just got to keep plugging forward and get just get it done. Okay, maybe I'll switch to a Bible study on clinical depression tonight. <laughs> looks like <laughs> Looks like this isn't going to go well. But I got my YouTubers. They're saving me. If you Can you help us out with the ministry? We need some uh, utility expense money this summer. It costs a fortune to heal, heat this or cool off this building. Just put our charity into Good Search and switch from Google, and they'll, they'll pay you 
They'll pay us while you surf the web. And if you use Amazon.com for you rich people, uh, put in Smile Amazon and put our charity in there, and then they'll pay us 1.2% of whatever you buy. And they just give it to us. But it doesn't come out of your money at all. It's just free money. So we've got several people who have done that now. We're grateful for it. <clears throat> Tonight's teaching is always on number two on our YouTube channels. Number five is our Thursday night teaching. Peter was here uh, Thursday night. Did somebody get healed Thursday night? What happened? A guy, a guy in black. A guy with blind in one eye got healed Thursday night right here. Uh, Peter, the preacher, was here. So, what? What? He's the first one to get prayed for. The first one to get prayed for. Oh, wow, that's great. Oh, they were. Oh, great. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, Peter, Peter, he's got a nice anointing. Karina teaches on Thursday nights. She has a bunch of healing. So. The Holy Ghost is here. He's the one that actually does all the healings. We don't do anything. All right. The miracle list I send out about a dozen a week. Uh, about 11 or 11 of the 12 people don't do. One of the 12, somebody usually does it. And it's really encouraging. They send me an email later and said, I can't believe this. This is amazing. So just send me an email and I'll send you one of those two lists. If you're mentally ill and you live in New Jersey which is pretty common from New Jersey, uh, <clears throat> get this list from me. And uh, you go through the steps, click, 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 click. And as soon as you see the list, the demons will spring to life in your head. They'll go crazy as soon as they see that list. Don't, don't worry about that. Just do one. Just do one. That's all you got to do. The first one. That's it. And forget the rest. Just start on one. Do not despise small beginnings. Just do the first one. Fight off the fear of spirits, which we're going to be talking about tonight. And just do number one. And you, you won't believe it. God will help you. He'll be with you every step of the way. All right? And uh, don't forget about your terror cells. This is very important. You need to open up a terror cell in your church. And start terrorizing the devil. He needs to be terrorized. He terrorizes everybody else. It's about time somebody terrorized him. Just start picking off the sick people in your church. Don't tell anybody about it. Keep it secret. Don't keep this secret. Thanks for your donations. Summer's coming up. God bless you. You can donate off the website. And time to start the Bible study. <clears throat> I've been a counselor for 37 years. And I'm not crazy which right there you got you got to go wow that's that's a Red Sea miracle but 25 of those years I was a secular counselor and that's that's tough too Christian counseling is harder and uh, a couple of years ago I read a book that really uh, stunned me and I didn't accept it when I read it, I just kind of put it on a shelf in my mind. I took a bunch of notes out of this book I read, and uh, I thought I would test it. So over the next couple of years, I kept that kind of thing on the side. I had taken some the information out of this book, and I broke it all down into different sections. And I was kind of testing it out because when I first read it, it seemed legit. But the source of it bothered me, and I don't want to go into any particulars about it. <clears throat> but over the next couple of years, I caught on to what the devil was doing, and I'm going to share it with you tonight. He uses six things to beat Christians. Six fears. And I'm going to go through them tonight with you real briefly. He tortures Christians using six areas, and here they are. Through my own experience of 37 years and through this other information I got out of this book, I've put this together for you. And these are the deep-seated fears of human beings, <coughs> all human beings, all over the planet. 
with the exception of dead human beings. Every human being who's alive uh, basically will face these types of fears. And let's start on number one. It's the fear of poverty. There's nothing worse than the fear of poverty. It's frightening. The sense or feeling that you're not able to take care of yourself is is horrible. Uh, the sense that you you can't you're not going to be able to make it. Uh, you can't you can't pay and live anywhere. You don't have food for clothing. You don't have food. It's really scary. And now here in America, with the way uh, our economy has changed and the way our society has changed, there's been a bifurcation of uh, people in America where you've got this middle class section of people who is kind of disappearing it's going down and then you have this lower class section accelerating and you have the wealthy section accelerating so you've got this massive group of people now all over the United States that are facing this horrible fear number one the fear of poverty is frightening <clears throat> And people who can't take care of themselves and don't have the money just for base, a basic existence commonly have these psychiatric issues I've noticed over the years. It's very common for people that are poor to live with these kind of negative emotions. It's really scary. And in Proverbs chapter 10, the Bible confirms it. That uh, a rich man's wealth is a strong city. Rich people and poor people are all the same, except life is easier for rich people for obvious reasons. They're able to provide for all their basic needs and a whole bunch of their wants. Poor people cannot. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Proverbs 20 Do not love sleep lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied. What's he saying there? There's all kinds of different reasons people are poor. But the fear of it is the same. Some people are poor because they screwed up. Some people are poor through circumstances out of their control. Uh, some people are poor because they're lazy or they had a bad business. There's a thousand different reasons why people are poor. But the fear of it is, is very real. And it kind of cuts across the board. Proverbs 23. The drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Well, here the Bible saying, hey, there's other causes of poverty. And some people, as you know, you've ever been had an addict in your family or you've ever been an addict. Wow. I was uh, teaching at a uh, men's rehabilitation center one time. Uh, the Streets of Joy was the name of it. It was over on 11th Street over here. And a uh, guy raises his hand and he says, I don't understand what happened to me. I said, I have I used to have a home, I used to have a job, I had a family, and I snorted everything I had in life up my nose. And uh, that was a very typical addict. He had lost everything. He says, I looking back on it, he said, I can't believe I did it. How did I do that? What happened to me? What's the mindset there? Well, here you instead of co cocaine, he's talking about alcohol and food. Well, it's the same concept or principle. Some people come to destruction through use of the chemicals. Proverbs 28. He that tills his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that follows vain or vanity shall have poverty. Wow. Couldn't be any truer here in America. Everybody going broke, getting on getting in on a quick get rich quick scheme. Oh boy, does that hurt. Bring ring. How you do it? Good. Uh, Knight's a Nigerian telemarketer. Oh, he's on the phone. He just inherited a million dollars. His whole country doesn't have a million dollars, but he inherited apparently a million dollars. And he doesn't have the money to go through the court costs. And guess what? He's going to split it with you if you just provide the money to get through the. Oh gosh, I got a new. I invented something. It's a. It can't lose. As soon as you hear the word can't lose, you better be out the dope. What's he talking about there? Vanity getting rich. Vanity getting rich. And Satan is about ready to take the country to a brand new direction. He's going to crush us like we've never been beaten before. Guess what's legal now? 
sports gambling it's over hell has now entered our universe it's all over now all over now sports gambling click there went the house payment click there went the groceries click 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 in your hand social app gamble it's going to be all over the united states we are finished this thing's going to be horrible on top of that make sure you would be completely finished pot is now running from one end of the country to the other and a whole bunch of other social ills so this verse couldn't be more true 3,000 years after it was written <clears throat> Proverbs 30 remove far from me vanity and lies and give me neither poverty nor riches Feed me with food convenient for me. What's he saying there? It's what Paul said we are to have moderation in all things why because if you're too poor that causes a series of problems That's going to cause you spiritual damage if you're too rich that does exactly the same thing There's a whole series of problems with being wealthy and managing wealth and greed and lust for material things that is just as bad as the agony of being poor so what he was saying is I'd like to stay somewhere in the middle and then I can be faithful good advice whoever wrote Proverbs pretty smart lest I be poor and steal and take the name of the Lord God in vain poverty is a horrible disease it gives the person this deep sense of societal anger they feel self-pity they feel they've been screwed unfairly screwed and the devil uses it to beat into the person hey you got screwed and it wasn't your fault look at all these other people they have this and that and that and this and you don't have it wow that's you're a little pissed off about that aren't you that's unfair that's unjust Wow, that's and suddenly that's why riots spark so quickly. People have this deep seated hidden rage over poverty, it really grinds on you. Here in Phoenix, we got poverty problems that are massive, not as bad as LA and San Francisco and New York and so on, but we do a much better job here than they do in California with homeless people. Um, we're not I'm not saying we're doing a great job, but we're better than a lot of other states and here's an example of it Cass is down here They do a fantastic job The in central Arizona shelter they, they do do a good job I mean they're all trying but we've got huge numbers of homeless people here in Phoenix But nothing like they have in Los Angeles and San Francisco. It's now at epidemic proportions all these people are living with all these demons and all these emotional fears and all these pains and all these clinical problems depression and sorrow and sadness and loneliness it's a it's a cesspool of satanic pain Las Vegas is one of the rottenest cities in the whole United States Nevada is one of the rottenest states in the United States they lead almost every category of every social ill you ever dreamed of because they have legalized gambling there. People are living in tunnels in, in the Las Vegas trying to get out of the heat. They don't spend any money trying to help homeless people or very little money to help the homeless or the poor. And they have to literally scavenge to get out of the heat in the summer. It's really scary. New York's incredibly bad. The homeless people are everywhere in New York now and they're not doing anything with them. They're roaming the streets like zombies. It's the saddest thing you've ever seen. Philippians chapter 4. Listen, the fear of poverty is one of the devil's greatest tools on people. And he uses that fear to get the person to become a hoarder. Have you ever seen somebody with a mental illness of hoarding? It's that's a fear-based mental illness. It's deep inside the soul where the person has a sense that, oh my God, if I don't keep this stuff. I'm not going to have anything. What if I lose it? And it's an irrational fear inside the person that causes them to hoard. If you become a born again Christian, if you become a spirit filled Christian, you never need suffer from this fear ever again the rest of your life. Why? Because God guarantees you will be taken care of. 
got a lot of backsliders here tonight. Let's uh, let me read that again. <clears throat> if you are a born again Christian, is that ring any bells? Uh, if you are a spirit filled Christian, this demonic fear, one of his greatest fears, there's a, there's six of them. One of them is the fear of not having something, the fear of poverty. This fear will never bother you ever again the rest of your life. You will never have this fear because you know God told you, I'm going to take care of you, and I guarantee it if you remain faithful and trust me. I guarantee I'll take care of you. If you run into a born again Christian who's in poverty, you better dig underneath that and find out what the spiritual problems are because something's malfunctioning. There's never a malfunction on father's end. There's always a malfunction on my end. So we always look at my end first. We never look at a malfunction there. If you know a born-again Christian who's in poverty or is struggling financially, the problem is never there. It's always here. So all you have to do is dig up what that root is, and this thing will clear up. I'll prove it to you. This verse guarantees you God will supply all your needs. It doesn't say all your wants. I didn't say that. It said all your needs. Uh, Matthew 6, Jesus said, take no thought for your life. Don't worry about eating. What, what are you going to eat? Those are basic necessities. Food. Uh, clothing, he said. You don't need to worry about that. I got all that covered for you. I'll prove it to you, Jesus said. Look at these birds. Look at that. God doesn't come down and bring them a buffet every day. He set up a system that runs automatically where the birds feed. It's called nature. Father set up the nature system. It works perfectly until man screws it up. And the birds are naturally fed normally. He just set up the system. Well, spiritually, he set up a system for every child of God and every born-again Christian that system is set up automatically to take care of your needs. You are automatically covered, and it's a guarantee from God. Look at these birds. Oh, look, there! your Heavenly Father feeds them. Does he hand feed them? No. He set up a system in nature that takes care of birds. So if God decided to set up this elaborate system to take care of birds, Jesus is saying, aren't you better than a bird? Now, some of you have got rejection demons and say, no, you know, my mother likes our parakeet better than me. I get that. I'm with you there. Just repent of that. Let's get that thing out of your brain. You are far more valuable than your parakeet at your mother's house. You are far more valuable to God. Your parakeet, one of these days you walk in the cage, clunk, it's just laying there. Hey, dude, wake up. It's dead. Too big a seed. Oop, got choked. They do that all the time. They just take a seed, they choke, and they fall in their cage. They're dead. They don't go anywhere. They're dead. They don't go to heaven. They don't go to hell. They're dead. You are not dead. You will never be dead. Your body's going to be dead. You ain't going to be dead. You are far more valuable, Jesus said, than birds for crying out loud. Why, why worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. Look, I set up a system where these lilies are killing it. I set that system up. They're drop dead gorgeous. Look at them. See, I did that, Father said. Okay, They don't work. They don't punch in. They don't punch out. They don't worry about their retirement. But even Solomon, in all the crap he whipped up, couldn't compete with a bunch of lilies. It's embarrassing. God set up a system to permanently take care of you, and if it's not happening and you're broke, something's wrong spiritually on your end. Get it fixed. Aren't you more valuable than a... Bunch of clothing. If God clothes the grass of the field, oh boy, which is what? Basically useless. You know, nature, things grow, then they die, they're gone, no biggie. You know, won't He much more take care of you with your needs? Of course He will. The system runs automatically. God guarantees to take care of you, He's going to do it. The system's all set up and it runs automatically. All you got to do is get into the system. All you got to do is pretend you're a lily. The lily grows up and says, hey, I'm in the system. Let's go for it. Party on, dude. And the lily grows and then drops. Look, it's gorgeous. 
the birds run around. Hey, I'm in the system. I'm fine. See, birds and lilies are not ignorant like Christians who fall apart and collapse at the drop of a hat. No, they don't. Lilies go, hey, I'm lily in it today. It's all good. And boom, I'm gorgeous. And they just do it because Father said, that's how the system I set up. That's how it works. Well, if you get that mindset, you win like lilies. I am going to be taken care of, period. All my needs are going to be taken care of. I got a wife. I got a husband. I got kids. God knows that. He's got them covered. There's never a need to fear Satan's monster, number one, the fear of poverty. So don't take any thought for what? Eating, drinking, clothing, all these things the Gentiles seek after, the ungodly, the people who don't know God. That they hunt for those things. They hoard stuff. They try to get money. They want this. They want that. Look, you don't have to spend a lot of your time praying about your needs. Your Heavenly Father already knows what you need, and it's already in the system that's automatically covered. There's no need for you to get up under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and pray God blesses the lilies this morning. Stop it. Who gives a sucking rat's fanny about a lily? That system runs automatically whether you pray for it or not. Hello. Oh. You don't need to get up and pray for the grass to cover the... The, the grass just grows... Oh, God, jeez. Where's the landscaper? Jeez. There's, there's the grass. Oh, God. I didn't tell the grass. Can somebody cut that? The system grows automatically, and you don't have anything to do with it. This system of being cared for your needs runs automatically, and you don't even need to pray for it. So he's, there, he's saying, forget it. I got that covered. Move over to something more valuable, like praying for him and that man and that girl. Pray for them. That's what I want you to do. Don't pray for something I already got covered that's a slam dunk. What should you be doing? Lord Jesus, oh God Almighty. God, let the lilies come up. Oh, make them beautiful. Jesus. Cut that crap. You don't have to pray for your yard. I may escape my yard. We put sod down. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it's, it's, just put the sod down and water it, sucker. It just grows because God set the system up. It runs automatically. You don't need to pray for your sod. <laughs> in the same way Christ is telling you, I got your needs covered. It comes in automatically. It's a done deal. Father knows what you need before you ask. It's over. Stop praying for that crap. Please, God, please, oh, Jesus. I got a whole underwear. Dude, you don't need to intercede over your underwear. Knock it off. Father knows your fanny's sticking out of your underwear. He got, he's got it. He's on the underwear. What does Father want you to do instead of praying for your needs? Okay. You seek first God's kingdom. That's what he's telling you to do. Stop praying for lilies. Stop praying for grass. Stop praying for birds. Stop praying for anything I've already got covered that runs automatically. Everything runs automatically in God's kingdom. The universe runs automatically. The planets go over here. They go over there. Then they go in a, a bunch of crap comes off a planet. Then it goes into a black hole. Then that sucks it up. And then another plant floats over here. Who gives a rat's fanny? Drop it! Who cares what a planet's doing? Screw it! Somebody's dying over here. Somebody needs healing. Get your mind right. If the system's set up that runs automatically by God, that you don't need to pray for. He's got it covered. If you obey the Lord and stop jacking around and losing your faith over your needs, which is ridiculous, all you have to do is trust these to me. Ready? It'll just fall in your lap. 
you open your door one day, boop, there it is. They just bring it right to you. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how the spirit world works. You got to understand how the spirit world works. Get out of the carnal world into the spirit world. What do you need to do about it? If you need to, just give yourself a slap in the head. If that's what you need. Ask somebody to yell at you. In fact, you don't even need to ask. Just go to a relative and stand there for a minute, and then one of them will yell at you. <laughs> Whatever you got to do to snap out of your insanity, you need to do it, and you need to do it fast. Stop worrying about your needs. They're already covered. They run automatically. You got to feed the birds. It feeds the grass. It feeds the lilies. It's all covered. Brother Mike, is the earth flat? I'll tell you what, I almost opened up the Holy Ghost slap one day on an earth flat thing. Oh, wow. I don't care if the earth is oval. Who gives a difference does it make? It's none of my business. People are dying and going to hell. Who cares what the earth looks like? It's all demonic. Let's get in a fight over. Dude, look, if you'll just understand that your needs are covered, you don't even need to pray about it. It'll just be brought to you. UPS, man, I, mean, I used to work for them. Oh, that's a tough outfit. Ooh. Oh, man. I used to work as a driver like that, guys, back in the 70s. Yeah, you know, I was making seven oh seven an hour. I'm not even joking. You could raise a family on seven oh seven an hour. But I'm not making that up. Minimum wage then was three thirty five. I was making seven oh seven an hour. I was killing it. I thought I owned the world till I got fired. That's another story. Now let's watch this. <laughs> Let's get back to the Bible study. Let's go to Satan's second greatest fear, and it's pure hell. Fear of poverty is, is pure hell. This one also, there's six of these things that he uses, and this is the second one. People are petrified of being criticized. They absolutely can't stand it. It is the most horrible thing. If you turn on the news now, all that broadcast is criticizing these people and this broadcast is criticizing that you can't even imagine it and that people are very sensitive about being criticized and one day the disciples came to uh, Jesus and he had been teaching some very hard doctrines very truthful doctrines and he had pissed off a lot of people and the disciples came to him behind the scenes and they said hey did you know you offended all these people by what you said okay? And one thing you've got to understand is if you're if you're breathing or you're dead, you will still offend people. Even after you're dead, a memory of you will pop up in a conversation and people will remember what an offensive royal suck you were after you're dead. Not even making it up. I make most of the other stuff up. This I'm not making up. People will criticize you into God the millennium. And they trashed Jesus. They oh, it was vicious. Even when you don't do anything wrong, people criticize you. Why? Because it's demonic. The devil knows this monstrous fear of somebody criticizing me really hurts people. People get really hurt over it and people react to criticism very differently But it's usually all negative Well, Jesus was showing them and teaching them how you're to handle it Jesus said every plant my Heavenly Father has not planted will eventually be rooted up Of course Let them alone. Holy smoke. They are blind leaders of the blind if blind people lead blind people they Fall into a ditch, right? Every time you're driving down Indian School Road, for some reason, there's a lot of blind people around here. 
and you see somebody with that white cane I always kind of I say a quick prayer God have mercy on him. I don't like people with canes walking on Indian school Because even if you can you get 2020 vision with no cane they'll run over you With a cane and can't see it's tough out there A fee of me is a tremendous revelation in this verse It's the same word used for forgive it means to release When you became a born-again Christian God forgave you a family he released you of your sins forever You are now perfect in God's eyes. You're a sinless person now because your sins have been released from you The same word is used in this verse. That's utterly amazing. Jesus said, if somebody criticizes you, or says something bad about you, or trashes you, you are to release them. Why is that so important? Well, he went into John chapter 16. He says, I told you all these things so that you will not be offended. The devil uses this terrible fear of criticism because Christians will take offenses. When they're criticized marriage kids relatives parents you name it if somebody trashes them the devil knows the soul of the human being starts to manifest and their feelings start getting involved once you receive criticism spiritually you're in the danger zone you're in deep deep trouble if you make that one step and take an offense that's it. As soon as you take an offense spiritually, you stop right there. There's the financial blessing gone. There's the anointing gone. There's your ministry gone. As soon as you start taking offenses, the devil knows that's a stop sign in the spirit world for you. But Jesus said, Listen, just release them. You don't keep them here. What they said about me, I'm not going to keep that. I never took it in, first of all. Second of all, I'm not going to, if I did, I wouldn't keep it more in a second. Because I got my father's business to attend to. So if you take an offense, the first thing that takes a tank is your father's business. Your call from God, what you're supposed to be doing with your life. What kind of a person you're supposed to be. Your sanctification, your anointing, your ministry, it all stops. As soon as you start taking offenses from people, and the devil uses them to criticize you. To get you to do it Nobody ever takes an offense over a compliment Hi, Mike. Oh, man brother Mike. I saw you on YouTube. Oh, you did. Oh, I can't believe how you're dressing I know it. I'm killing it. I cause a lot of jealousy boy. Those outfits are beautiful. That's something else man We love you brother Mike. Thanks. I wasn't offended at that person. I didn't take a swing at him I didn't cuss him out. I wasn't mad at all Why because he had 2020 20 vision look at this yeah, great <laughs> they were complimenting me. Nobody takes offenses when you get complimented They only take offenses when you get criticized the devil's not going to compliment you. He doesn't compliment anybody He flatters them. That's a different subject than compliment a flattery is not a compliment. That's a setup Criticism is used by Satan because he knows it's a deep-seated fear in your soul to get you to take an offense And once you take an offense You're in deep trouble, buddy you lose your friends you lose your church. You lost the home group. You quit your job You ran you caused an accident. You went out and got drunk as soon as you start taking offenses hell follows you to breakfast Your life is over sucker That's right Yeah, we got some ghetto here That's right. Listen Jesus said not hey chill boop, boop. Just release them Just release them let it, go. Let it go. Why? Because they don't want you to take a offense. Scandalizo. Where we get our English word? Right. If you do that, your ministry is over. Matthew twenty-six. He quotes Zechariah. Jesus said, "All of you will be offended at me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the flock shall be scattered." Oh man. Once you start taking offenses from people and you become appalled 
and other people's behavior as soon as you start that you'll start making bad choices You'll make impulsive choices You'll make emotional choices. Oh suddenly you're out of a job. Oh suddenly you're out of a marriage. Oh suddenly you're out of money Suddenly you're out of your mind And it all started with the devil bringing you a criticism and you not releasing it, Phew, I feel you. Let it go. You didn't do it. When's he started? Usually in grade school, we call it bullying. You're trashing some person, and they're taking offenses, and they're receiving wounds, and they never recover from it the rest of their lives. Many will be offended and betray one another. Absolutely. People that used to be best friends took offenses at each other. Now they're enemies. And they're talking about each other behind their back and trashing each other. Man, it gets ugly. You'll be scattered one another. You'll betray one another. Ephesians chapter 1. Listen, if you're a born-again Christian and a spirit-filled Christian, you never have to worry about this second hideous fear from Satan. Criticism you never have to worry about it because you are a new creation in Christ and you understand you have a new identity In Christ you are not the old person you used to be. Yeah, we all agree you stunk <laughs> Yeah, we all agree you st absolutely If you look that word up in the dictionary you see my picture there I stunk as a sinner What a rotten person I was trash. I was toilet material. But once you become a born again Christian, once you're a spirit filled Christian, you become a new creation in Christ. You are a new person in Christ. And because you don't understand that, you still have the same crappy problems you had when you were a sinner. But if you change your mind and receive your true identity in Christ, you will never worry about what somebody says about you again. And Ephesians 1 proves it that we are to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us cariato, generously favored in the beloved. If these people don't like you, the difference does it make Father has favored you. Well, who cares? You go to work and the custodians don't like you, but the Department manager likes you. Are you gonna sit around? What the big deal? The manager likes me who cares what the Here's the monster number three This is a deep-seated human fear it's in the soul fear of losing your health Because our favorite saying here in America is uh, if, you have, if you don't have your you have your health you have everything or something like that People are petrified of getting sick and it's much worse now than it used to be because People's life expectancies now have been extended by like 15 years That's a hike if People used to die, you know early What was it? 70.1 or something like that 20 years ago now it's like in the 80s or something. Well, the problem with that is people are being kept alive longer. Okay? And what nobody understands is, or apparently they don't, is that uh, it's not how long you live, it's the quality of your life. How long you live doesn't matter. It's the quality of the years. Somebody who lived 50 years could have had a much better life somebody lived 100. Easy. People are now living beyond their means and they're being kept alive. They're being kept alive. I remember years ago when I first got turned my life over to the Lord, I got, I was on fire for God. And I used to go out and, with a friend of mine at the church, Messianic Jewish guy. His name was Ira. I was mentoring him. What I was doing mentoring anybody, I'm not sure, but 
he was a, he was a whacked out Messianic Jew. <laughs> he was like gone. And uh, he nearly drove me, drove me back to the night train. But let's not. That's a different. That's a different Bible study. But anyway, I, he used to go with me. We used to go out all the time. I'd find people to go pray for. Somebody tell me about somebody that was sick or something like that. And I used to travel all over the valley, going over and praying for people. And very, very rarely did anybody ever get healed. Very rarely. I mean, it was really discouraging. And uh, I was deeply confused back there. I didn't know anything about demons or things that block healing or any. I didn't know anything about the spirit world. I was just running out there on my enthusiasm. Well, I remember one time I went to South Phoenix down by South Mountain, and I went to a care center there for for resp uh, patients that were on respirators. And I walked in there. I'm telling you, I I like to, I like to puke. I like to. Oh my God! You got to be kidding me. They they had rows of these humans. Uh, drowning victims that were on respirators and their bodies were almost melting into the beds. It, it was the sickest thing I'd ever seen. Uh, they they were brain dead, I mean, and they were, but they were keeping them all alive. It was weird. It was a weird experience, surreal, surreal. And pr we we prayed for the person we went down there, and he was in the same thing. He'd been in, he'd been he drowned, and he but he was alive. But he had drowned and his brain brain dead. And I was sitting there thinking, I was I was torn between what are they doing here? How does this work? And why won't God heal them? I had all these thousands of thoughts pounding through my brain. And I didn't understand what was going on. Why are they keeping where's where's this girl's parents? Why is that girl sitting there in that bed and all sh you know your joints? All withdrawal, your legs go in. I mean, it's it's ugly when you sit in bed like a vegetable for 15 years. It's hideous, looking, horrible. And I'm wondering why are they why are they here? Where are their parents? What are they? Why are they on a respirator? Is this a legal issue? You know, I had all these thousands of thoughts in my mind. And then I were down. Then me and I were down there praying our guts up for this kid that we went down there to pray for, and he wasn't healed. Nothing nothing good happened to him. So then I'm then I'm on the way home. I'm weeping, and I've got all these other Weird thoughts pounding through my mind. Why wasn't it healed? What's wrong with me? Why isn't this working? What's wrong with the word of God? The devil was like speed bagging me. And I didn't understand the spirit world back there. And I didn't know how all this stuff worked. Yeah. And people see all these sick people in care centers and rest homes and day programs. They see these people living beyond how they used to live. And there's a movement now sweeping the United States of physician assisted suicide and it's going to hit all of us sooner or later every state like pot and like sports betting eventually is going to go to assisted suicide and the reason for that is everybody's living beyond their means everybody's living too long and it's not how long you live it's the quality of your life the difference doesn't make if you live a hundred years when you've got Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or you're hooked up to a respirator it doesn't make any sense and people are looking at all these old people we're now racking up in our society. It's a sociological issue. And they're going, wait a minute here. Something wrong. Why, why are these people dying? And then people that are approaching that age when they've come down with a sickness are going, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Whoa, time out. I don't want to sit in a bed. I don't want to die like that. What's happening here? I got to get out of this mess. And so what they did in Oregon, for example, they tried to do it in California and it was just shot down. In Oregon, they passed the uh, Die with Dignity Act. And so if you meet a certain criteria medically, you qualify for those services uh, if you have six months to live and so on. But I'm not, I'm not pro or against that. I'm not trying to, uh, I don't want to get involved in politics. What I'm saying is the reason that's happening is because people are living longer than they used to live but the quality of their life is not better. They're coming down with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and all kinds of weird satanic diseases. And so their lives, the older they get, it sucks more. And so other people that are approaching that age, in the 50s, 40s, 60s, are going, whoa, wait a minute here. Grandpa's over here. Grandma's over here. His uncle's over there. His aunt's over there. I got to get the heck out of here. This ain't right. I don't want to be kept alive on tubes or something like that. 
listen if you're a born-again christian and you're a spirit-filled christian you never need fear this again Is any sick among you james 5 let him call for the elders of the church let them pray on them anointing them with oil in the name of the lord the prayer of doubt shall sick The prayer of faith Shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up if they've committed sins they shall be forgiven All right. Now it says here in James verse 16 this verse caused all kinds of problems Centuries ago the Roman Catholics jumped on this thing and they developed the confessional Anybody in been in a confessional you have Kelly <laughs> get her where's Rick there's one now they said see it says confess your sins to one another and confess your faults that's the Greek word paraptima and it means uh, your failures your screw-ups uh, things that are that are no good and that you failed at and which is great because if you ever see somebody preaching or teaching they'll get up here I've done it everybody's done it you tell them about hey you wouldn't believe what I did this that this and that and I was in this circumstance there here there and here And guess what God saved me and I got out of it and so on and you you share your testimony You were down and now you're up, which is great. This is what it's talking about You failed at this you failed at that if you talk to someone or reveal that to someone who's had a similar experience or has some knowledge in that area you can get some help from your brothers and sisters in Christ and you can get it with unconditional agape love so that somebody's not criticizing you because you failed That's the point of it So he's saying here don't sit around and confess your deep deepest dark sins in your mind Oh, oh I had a dream last night. Oh, I, I, was, I was having sex with the second grader at the top of the Empire State Building I don't know what happened. No, you don't sit down and confess your deep sins to that the confessional thing doesn't work It's just it's just there to pacify your emotions to make you think oh I did something and now I feel better it isn't it doesn't work spiritually you can't keep confessing a sin you are continuing to commit and be forgiven you're not being forgiven the Bible requires repentance what in God's name <laughs> kind of a place is this so you confess your failures or faults to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Oh, everybody missed that in the verse. For the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. How does the healing process work? It's spelled right out in this fantastic section of text. It's so good. It's unbelievable. The person who's sick comes and asks for prayer. They ask to be anointed with oil. Now the oil can't heal anything. It's a symbol of the Holy Ghost, His great power. He's the one person that heals 100. percent Three. In the name of Buddha. No, this is a Jesus Christ and His broken body. That's the only thing that can heal heal you, and that's the only thing the Holy Ghost uses to heal you. He places His broken body on your broken body, heal. And he's the only person that has the broken body of Christ, so he's the guy to go to. You can't pray with doubts. That's really hard for Christians in America. Man, that is a that's a that's a day buster. Here's how it works. It's so easy. You go for prayer on Sunday. And if it doesn't work, you've got a doctor's appointment Monday. You already had a schedule. So the person in the back of their minds thinking, if this Jesus thing doesn't work, I, I got to so be at four o'clock. Confess your failures to one another so you can get prayer and learn from your mistakes. And then it says, if you want to be healed, you pray for others. I do that a lot in deliverance, particularly when I have families or husbands and wives. It works fantastic. If this person is going through deliverance, I'll get the spouse over there. Hey, now come on, help. 
cast the demons out of your wife vice versa tell those spirits to come out of your husband it works it works almost every time I learned it from that verse and what fervency these kind of prayers don't work oh, geez. God. is it prayer time Oh, uh, I'm in a Catherine Coleman mood. Uh, dear Jesus. Listen, dude. It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. If I can't get this person to hate the devil and turn on the devil and turn on sin and fight for their lives and fight for their children's lives in the name of Jesus, I got a bad problem on my hands here. I got a mess on my plate that's not going to get cleared up. I got a screwed up family that's going to leave my office screwed up. Why? Because they're not doing what God told them to do. What? Oh, Let me sit down and think about that one. Ooh, that's deep. The reason the Word of God is there is that it's for our instruction. We're supposed to, oh God, I hate to use four letter words. But I'm not a minister, so I might as well. Who cares? <laughs> Obey. <laughs> God Almighty, I feel like somebody tased me. Listen, the, the instructions are there. The purpose of the instructions, I know this sounds like I'm back on night train. Obey, then it works. Disobey, and it does not work. It's not rocket science. You want to get healed? There's your pattern. I just summarized it for you. It's so easy to learn. I say to you, the two of you shall agree on earth or such anything that shall ask. Uh, it shall be done for them of my Father in heaven. What's he doing there? He's, say, he's explaining. I'm confessing to him. He's, he's praying and helping me with my thing. I'm praying for that person. That one's praying for me. There's power in agreed prayer see lone wolves don't go far in the ministry a lone wolf's a bad person it's usually pride ego or vanity or they got a bad personality and they don't get along with people okay that person should not be in the ministry no offense where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst two or three not your lone wolf Two or three healing, focusing. You know, that's where Lake came up with the healing rooms. He read these verses. He goes, wait a minute. We can get somebody in here. We can get a group of people to agree on them. He was having people healed in droves. The fourth hideous fear that the devil uses on people is the fear of never being loved. Everybody is born with this innate desire in the soul. Every single person, normal person, I'm not talking about somebody who's disabled, but every normal person is born with a soul. And in your soul are your emotions. And one of your emotions in the soul is the desire to love and to be loved. Everyone has it. Every single, every single soul. There's not an exception. And... I, this article that came out in August 2013, they did a research study, and it was, I thought it was really interesting about some of these research findings they had because I really believe they're, they're true. Uh, particularly in our society now with social media running so rampant, this Facebook, uh, Twitter stuff is like a plague. It's a demonic plague. What it is is I don't have to relate to you personally anymore. There's no interpersonal thing with you and I anymore. I'll just send you a text. I'll send you a Facebook. Adios, amigo. And people are using that because it's easier to get in a fight with somebody on Facebook. It goes back and forth quickly. Click, click, click. And Twitter, twitting. Oh, they're all twitting. Trump twits. Everybody twits. The whole, whole country's now full of twits. It's unbelievable. <laughs> But it's all demonic. He's trying to falsify, denigrate our personal relationship because Christianity is a personal relationship. It's not a twit. It's not a, a thing. 
that that's all fake. The Christianity and Christ, the Holy Ghost, he's a very personal person. He wants you. You. He's a you person. Very deep. Okay? And people are massively lonely. They don't have any friends. Oh, it was sad. Here's another article I found, a research study that was published in the Journal of Neuropsychology. I'm sure many of you still have your subscriptions. And it's talking about brain activity, and they found that the activity of the brain was stronger and more rapid when love thoughts were being uh, analyzed. And everybody thought it was the opposite with porn running amok in America. It isn't. Love in the brain is more powerful than the urge for sex. Everybody has it. They want to be loved. These homeless people are starved for love. Everybody is. And the devil knows that. So what he does is he sends the monster of childhood, the spirit of rejection. I've got all kinds of teaching on it. And he sweeps through the family, stealing everybody's love. John 14. If you are a born-again Christian, this fear from Satan never bother, will never bother you again. If you got the Holy Ghost, you can beat this thing right out. You can stomp this thing down so fast because the Word of God is telling you, point blank, John 14. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. Agapao is a verb, and it means to demonstrate love. To love by demonstration is a verb, an active verb. So if I say I love you, that means nothing. If I love you, I'm showing love to him. See, agapao. It's not agape. Agape is here. Agapao is there when I reach for him. Right? And this is what he's saying here. You're showing your love for me by keeping my commandments. Not because you're in a legalistic church and if you don't wear a tie, somebody's going to kick your face in. No, this is keeping the commandments of God out of love and respect. That there's a difference. In the Old Testament, it was, I'll keep these commandments so I don't get executed. No, the New Testament's based on keeping commandments totally different now. We don't disobey the commandments because we do them because of love now see it's a love system he that loves me agapao anybody who wants to demonstrate and show their love to me will then be loved of my father agapao he will then demonstrate his love for you father will if you demonstrate your love for Christ, Father will demonstrate his love for you. A, a verb, agapal. He will not just love you, he will show his love for you. And I will, agapal, I will show my love for you. Translation, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. My father and I are not cheap. We will show you we love you. We will get our love to you. Amen. Amen. I thought it was a good verse. And while I'm showing you I love you, I will also show up. Out of love. John 14, Jesus said, if a man loves me, what's that mean? If a man demonstrates they're loving me, shows they're loving me, doing something loving to me, he will keep my words. You're not doing it out of legalism, you're doing it out of love. You're keeping his words, which is an action, and my father will love him. And we will come to them. And here's how we will demonstrate our love. Agapao. We will show you we love you by doing what? Monet, 
moving into your life and your house, your residence, Monet. I will move into your house. That's how I will show you I love you. Talk is cheap. My father and I are not cheap. We will show you we love you. That's what it's saying. By moving into your Monet, your residence, where you live. You're not going there. We'll come to your house. John 15, as the Father has loved me, all through the Gospels, Father was showing the Pharisees and scribes, this is my Son, the Beloved, whom I'm well pleased. And he showed him one healing after the other, one deliverance after the other, one word of wisdom. Father demonstrated that this was my Son. Right? The Father sent the Holy Ghost to him without measure. As my Father has shown his love for me, so I have shown my love for you. So therefore, you are to continue in my agape, now, love. That's what it's saying. You got to break it down a little. If you keep my commandments, you will what? May know, remain in my love. If you, you will remain in my love. If you disobey and run over here, you come out from under Agapao, me showing you, I'm loving you. Of course, because you don't love me anymore. If you're not obeying my commandments, that means you do not Agapao. You are not showing your love for me. If you remain in my love, Agapao, if you remain under the love I'm showing you, then you are my disciples indeed. I, Jesus said, remained under my Father's demonstration of love. And you do the same to me. If you keep my commandments, you shall remain, may know, in my agapao, demonstration of love. Translation, as the Pentecostals would say, you're going to be under the fountain. A blessings, brother. <laughs> Under the fount of water. The flowing water. What they're really saying is, listen, do what I tell you, and I will continue to demonstrate my love for you by sending you blessings, meeting all your needs automatically with you not even praying for them. I got everything covered. I will take care of you from pillar to post. I got everything planned out for you. The Holy Ghost is on top of all of it. But if you tell me to go take a hike or go suck on a banana and you get out from under my love, whoa, wait a minute. Now you're opening the doors to another world, a dark world. And there's a dark person out there. He has six horrible fears he hurts people with. This is the fourth one. Fear of not being loved. If you're a born-again Christian, you never have this fear ever again. These things I spoke to you that my joy might be remain in you. Well, of course it was. If you know you are unconditionally loved, agape, and you are showing your love back to him, agapao, and he is showing his love down to you, agapao, you are in a state of joy. That's a good place to be. Do I need to start dancing? Is that what I need to learn? Do I need to? I gotta start watching Sammy Davis Jr. tapes. If you're showing love and he's showing it to you, you're naturally going to experience the joy of the Lord. If you're not obeying him and not loving him, oops, that's going to result in an unjoyous experience. That's right. When you're on YouTube, you just make stuff up. Make up the words. <laughs> These things I've spoken to you that your joy might remain and it might be full. John 16. The Father himself loves you. Whoa! Phileo. 
now we're not that's a different Greek word, isn't it? And it means what? Brotherly love, like to be fond of. That's where we got our name Philadelphia from. I'm not gonna go there, but there's an irony there. But anyway, Phileo means that father not only likes you, loves you, he likes you. See? You gotta be kidding me. I know that's what you're thinking right now. You got to be kidding. I can't I can't name on one hand. Can I get to the second hit? No, I can't. How many people really like you? Don't answer that. I'm gonna say maybe one. How about two? Maybe you're like my wife. You're probably not. I never met anybody like her. Uh, I think she's secretly sick. But everybody, is that door, my office door shut? Everybody that meets my wife likes her. It's freaky. I run about 40%, but everybody likes her. And if I need to do some like type marketing, I go get her. Because once they meet here, they're gonna like her. Everybody likes her. I mean, it's it's sick. Uh, <laughs> something's wrong there, and I don't know what it is, but I don't have the time to analyze it. But listen, Jesus said, "God, Father, not only agape unconditionally loves you, He also likes you." And very few, no offense, sir, very few people like you. <laughs> yeah, I took a quick look at you, sir, and I know you on the. You on a low percent roll. Yes, uh, I'll sit over here. Oh, there's a couple people over here. I ain't too happy. Yeah. So listen, uh, most people do not like you. That's true for everybody. Okay. It doesn't matter anymore. If you're a born again Christian, you're spiritual. You don't care if somebody likes you or not. You don't care if they criticize you or not. You don't care what, uh, what happens. Father loves you. And father likes you that's how powerful the blood of jesus is that's incredible can you imagine it that removes the sin with the blood and a red sea miracle follows it it allows god to like you and you're not a likable person no offense because you have what you like me what an interesting bible study to me anyway God is talking about loving people and liking them I find myself I find that fascinating because those are two different emotions there are two different levels they have two different applications you can like stuff that you don't love you can love someone you don't like parents oh yeah yeah you love your son oh but you've had that urge that Cain urge you ever had a cane urge out in the field? Pope. You ever had that with a kid? Uh huh. No. Yeah. Don't raise your hand. But you can love people you don't like, and you can like people you don't love. But Father looks at you and you and you, and He says, "I love you, and I like you." Incredible. Why? You like me, He says, and you believe. I came from God. This too, the verb. You act like you believe me. Fear number five. Five out of six. The fear of old age. I'll tell you what, this thing's scary. <clears throat> when I was in my teens or my 20s, I never had any fear of it. I did not. I did not have any fear of it. And it starts to click in when you get a little older. And these thoughts have kind of come to me intermittently. I fight them off, but when I got my 60s, I'm going, Ooh, I'm going to short fuse here. I'm not going to be around too much longer. And if you have other relatives who are getting old, uh, you can see as you get older that old age, you see how the devil uses it because it's, it's kind of scary. You're not the same person you used to be when you get a little older, right? Yeah. Yeah, when you were young, 
oh man you you had the world by the tail when you got older 50 60 70 whoo you went through the syndrome I call it you know you you started out with LT then you went to ED after you had VD and then you went to oh me and the whole system is going like holy criminy this ain't fun anymore okay old age is not fun check it out King David had this fear too. cast me not off in the time of my old age do not forsake me when my strength fails Ecclesiastes 6 says this a man begats a hundred children and lives many years so that the days of his years be many and his soul is not filled with good he says it's better that the <laughs> person should have been miscarried what absolutely couldn't have said it better myself what you're doing in this life the carnal things of life mean absolutely nothing when you die and go to hell it doesn't matter what you own or how much you have or how rich you are everybody's broken hell everybody's screaming in hell you can't pick out somebody who's rich in hell to save your life. They're all the same. You wasted your life. I watched that special on Warren Buffett. That's, that guy's an amazing guy. What an interesting person he is. Loved it. They said, uh, what about your spiritual beliefs? Uh, do you believe in God? Well, I don't know. Nobody can really know that or not. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Warren, dude. Oh man, I wish I'd have been there. I would have tried to help the guy. The guy's got billions and he's about a year or so away from kicking the bucket. I don't know how old he is, but he's gonna be screaming in the fires of hell. He'll have nothing there. Nothing. And he's a good person. Listen, hell is full of good people. Full of it. Up to here. Good people. Ecclesiastes 12. Now let's Remember this for your future uh, preaching. If you want to teach about old age, use this chapter. It is perfect. So I'm going to go through it. It's so interesting. He uses he uses interesting language to describe old age here. It's really fascinating. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 is the old age chapter. Here we go. Remember your creator in the days of your youth while the evil days are not here yet. Hey, no kidding. He's talking about old age. Nor when the near years draw nigh. Nigh to what? Dropping dead. When you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. If you've ever been to a care center or a rest home or something, and you look in these rooms and those people in there, let me tell you something. Life ain't fun anymore. Life's, life's no fun anymore. Life stinks. Somebody's got to roll me down here. I mean, it's awful. And this chapter goes right through it and hits it bullet point. Interesting. While the sun, the light, the moon, and the stars be not darkened. Translation, you don't see your friends anymore. The older you get, it's weird. When I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was young, I didn't personally know anybody that died. It was weird. When I got older in my later 50s in my 60s People are dropping dead on me People I know are dying. It's weird When you get real old Like my dad for example, he's 90 now and he's dying of cancer All of his friends from his childhood are all dead. He outlived at 90 every person he ever knew Except one old girlfriend. Her name's Muffy. <laughs> and they email. Muffy's 88. Dad's 90. Sometimes I ask him, Dad, how's Muffy doing? I don't really care to be honest with you, but I'm just kind of making conversation. But the point is, your friends don't come to see you anymore because. You sitting in a wheelchair or drooling over crackers. You're not the most exciting inviting person to see during the day. Hello 
I'm putting it mildly now. Let's just get blunt about it. Nobody likes old people and they want to boot them into a facility and get them the H-E-L-L -L out. Don't quote me on that. It ain't fun anymore. The friends are all gone. Nor the clouds return after the rain. What? Yeah, depression comes out. I used to be able to run. I used to be able to play. I used to be able to do this. I used to be able to go there. I used to be able to drive. I can't do that anymore. And Solomon's talking about, oh my God, they're so depressing being old. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall, yeah. God, you walk, to, walk up and down the aisles and people have got Parkinson's. They're shaking all over the place. They've got Alzheimer's. It's awful. The grinders cease because they are few. No kidding, they start losing your teeth. Back in those days, they didn't have all this incredible dental services we've got now. And they were gumming it. Those that look out of the windows be, be darkened. You start losing your vision. That's no fun. Everything on this list that Solomon put here is no fun. The door shall be shut in the streets. You can't even go anywhere anymore. You can't drive. Nobody will come get you. You can't walk long distances. I mean, it's a drag. When the sound of the grinding is low, what's that? Your teeth fall out. You're gumming your food. He shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Yeah, old people start hearing things. I was hoping to get no response on that. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yeah, you start forgetting stuff. You can't remember stuff. When they shall be afraid of that which is high. Yeah. As you get close to dying, if you're in your right mind, there's a mystery about transitioning from this life to the next one. There's a mystery there. And nobody knows exactly what happens when you transition. That's why it's a mystery. That's why the devil uses it fear of death because there's an unknown sense on the other side that people have they have it by nature the devil uses your nature against you and fear shall be in the transition a lot of people are scared to die I told you that story three weeks ago uh, of uh, that rock uh, star uh, James Brown when he died textbook example He's laying in his hospital bed. There's two of his relatives sitting there. He's in a coma. He sits up in bed out of the blue. Suddenly and dramatically, he starts screaming. The fire, the fire, it's in my lungs. The flames, the fire. The other two leap up. They're trying to comfort him. He flops back in his bed and dies. Imagine that. The demons came for him, burning him up, and then took, took him to hell. Right in front of two family members. They were in the room and saw it. You've seen that in a nurse many times. Yeah, it's this transition thing here. Nobody really knows what's on the other side. Even a Christian. See, most of it you take by faith. And because you know the love of God, you know it's incredible victory. But there's a, you know, there's a question mark. It's perfectly normal. I don't understand everything in that transition. And it's kind of, it can be scary, particularly unsaved people. The almond tree shall flourish... You know, I got some myself. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. And no kidding. If I need something lifted, I call my wife. I can't. I used to be able to lift stuff. I, when I was in college, I had a part-time job with United Van Lines. I used to move furniture. Okay. Now when I look at a piece of furniture, I get scared. I used to pick up crap you can't even believe. Rick, for example, over there, see him sitting there? He's a great guy. He doesn't pick up anything anymore either. He pays somebody else to do it. <laughs> He's smart. Yeah, you get old and you can't move stuff. You can't pick stuff. You, get, you, know, you know how it is. Hey, I'm my back, my legs. My Man goes to his long home and the mourners go about the streets. What's he talking about? Yeah. The, the pathetic funerals of sinners, particularly famous people. Have you ever seen those? Uh, you ever go to a funeral and you know the person well? 
and you can't believe all the crap they say about them and it's all nice stuff and you're going wow this guy, wow who's that <laughs> it's embarrassing the silver cord is loosed yeah no kidding you your back doesn't work right anymore your vertebrae start fusing you get humped arthritis fibroma and the golden bowl is broken now that happens all the time. The worst thing for seniors, the worst thing is falling. That's the thing that scares caregivers more than anything and, and relatives. Slipping and falling because they clunk, or con they'll, their bones are brittle, they break like click. The pitcher be broken at the fountain and the wheel is broken. Yeah, here's, you have a heart attack after all of that. Great. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. They bury your body and you turn into dust again. And your spirit goes back to God who gave it. Chapter 12, Ecclesiastes. No? Okay. Old age is blessed by God. Listen, if you are a born again Christian and you've got the Holy Ghost and you're a spirit filled Christian, you do not need to fear old age. You can be blessed in old age. And if you don't believe me, check these guys out. All of these people lived old lives, long lives, and they were blessed by God. Productive right to the end. Old age does not have to be a disaster. If you've got the Holy Ghost. Psalm 92, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing. Isaiah 46, hearken to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, born by me from the belly and carried from my womb. Here Jehovah is, is uh, using symbolism to describe his relationship with Israel like they were, his, they were his child, like they were his family. And he's saying, hey, I, I birthed you. I, I begot you, so to speak. Even to your old age, I'm still here for you, he's saying. Even to the gray hairs, I will still carry you. I have made and I will bear and carry and I will deliver you. If you're a born again Christian, you got the Holy Ghost. You do not need to fear old age. The Holy Ghost will stay with you right to the very end. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision and your old age. You can still be used by God. You can still be healthy when you get older. You don't have to go the way of the mourners in the streets. All right, let's do the last one. The fear of death. Wow, this is a big one. That's why there's so many movies with people getting killed. That's why the devil has so many horror movies out there. Because deep-seated in a human soul, is the fear of dying and the fear of death in Job chapter 18 he called it the king of terrors for the for the obvious reason nobody really knows what's on the other side in Job 16 he called it going the way of no return yeah that's for sure once you're dead and you're not coming back Job 14 man lies down he rises not he does not wake up. Yeah, that's exactly a perfect description of dying. Hebrews chapter 2. Listen, if you're a born-again Christian and you got the Holy Ghost, death is not a problem for you. I'll prove it to you. As the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same. It's that through death, he might... Catra Gale, what does that word mean? We went over that last week. Remember? Catra Gale means to wipe it out. I just did it. It's gone. See that? I had that mark on there, and now it's gone. Through death, he might wipe out, eviscerate, remove. 
the devil, who had the Kratos, he owns the dominion of dying and death. That's his dominion, and it was wiped out at the resurrection of Christ. If you have the Holy Ghost and you got the Holy Spirit and you're born again Christian, there is no longer any need for you to fear dying. It is no longer on your plate because you have been delivered. Those who had the fear of death and they were all their lifetime subject to bondage. When you die without Jesus as your Savior, you enter a realm of eternal death where you are tortured forever. Why? Because Jesus said, if you don't believe I am he, you will die in your sins. Right. If you die in your sins, you carry your sins into eternity and therefore you have to give an account of them. If you receive Christ as your Savior, he gave an account of your sins. You got off. You are sinless. You escaped eternal death and you no longer have to fear death the ultimate ir irony is what abortion what how ironic the parents abort the child who goes right to heaven and the parents then later in life die and they go to hell the irony the child gets saved that's murdered and the parents have to pay for the child's death after they die not to mention the torture they have to pay for in this life when the demon of death enters them after they had the abortion if you had an abortion come down for prayer tonight we got to get that thing out of there because you'll come down with a terminal illness later they're very skilled at term terminal illnesses they'll give you one if you aborted the child including the dad you paid for the abortion and you went ahead with it danger zone red flag that's an aside if you're a born-again Christian you got the Holy Ghost God forgave you of aborting your child you no longer need fear death ever again and you're not in bondage to it because you have eternal life first Corinthians 5 I we are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord dying and Christianity becomes an asset you actually end up better off dead I know what you're thinking I know some of my relatives and friends that that applies to it. no this is a spiritual thing when you die as a born-again Christian if you have the Holy Ghost you're better off dead for me to live as Christ and die is better it's better to die Paul was the greatest Christian that ever lived any, if anybody knows that, he would. Hebrews 12. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are, which are written in heaven, to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. The Bible just described you after you're dead. If you got the Holy Ghost, dying is like hitting the lottery. It couldn't go any better. So this is great. I'm dead. This is wonderful. Luke 18. Jesus said, Verily I say to you, there is no man that has left their house or their parents, their brothers, their wife, their children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who will not receive, receive, Paula Plasian, a whole bunch more now and in the next age, life everlasting. If you just break it down economically, and I hate to do that, it sounds so carnal, but there's a lot of paybacks for being a Christian. Uh, some of the time sometimes are tough here, but there you're killing it You've hit the spiritual lottery you're the winner Yeah, you spun the Holy Ghost wheel it fell on the red blood 
and you ended up with all the marbles. Did I present that carnally enough for you? Was it received? As I, I went as low as I could go. All right. Listen, uh, if you have any of these fears, I researched them heavily, and I do believe these things are valid. Uh, these fears, the devil uses constantly to torment Christians. Here's the six fears. If you have any of these fears, there's something spiritually broken in you that God wants to fix. If you have any of these fears. Let's pray then Father uh, I did my little research project over the last couple of years and I put this little thing together and I, I was hoping that it would it was going to help somebody I hope it did but I know that these fears are real because I've seen them in many clients over the years when I was a secular counselor when I was a Christian counselor I see them in both and the devil uses these horrible fears of poverty and fear of being criticized, fear of losing your health, fear of never finding love or never being loved, fear of old age, fear of dying. I know he uses these things on people. And I know that if we fear these things as spirit filled Christians, that something spiritually is wrong. There's something in our soul that's broken and it needs to be fixed. And I want to ask you tonight, Lord, to fix it. And I know you can and I know you will. Now, with, with your eyes closed there, just raise your hand so I can pray for you. If you have one of these six fears, one of these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 15, 15, thank you. Father God, you see these hands raised right now? They have one of these six fears. And that means the devil has something on them. He has sent evil spirits. The demons of fear have done their job. They implanted in the soul of your children one of these fears. Okay. All right. The second question: Just raise your hand if you have more than one of those fears on that list. There were six of them there. Raise your hand if you have more than one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, several hands went up. I'm asking you right now to help them. I'm lifting them up to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I want them healed tonight. I want you to forgive them for having fear thoughts and believing them. I know the demons put thoughts in their minds, and that's not their fault. But if they believe the thought, it then becomes our sin. And I'm asking you to forgive them right now. These fear thoughts about poverty and old age and dying and never being loved and never finding someone to love. I'm asking you to forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. Now, if you have got one or more than one of these fears, just come up here so we can pray for you tonight, would you? Just come up here real quickly. YouTubers, you just stand right in front of your computer there and just follow my directions. If you have more than one of these six fears, these are all demonic. And if you're a born again Christian, that means the demons have got something on your soul. They got something on your soul. The ministry team's going to come forward and help me now. Thank you, Jesus. There's something wrong with your soul. You've got more than one of these fears. More than one. 
and these fears are going to catch up with you. The devil uses fear spirits to plant these seeds in your soul and they grow over time. They grow and they become more powerful. They get stronger and it's very dangerous to have them because they never get easier. They always get worse. And the demons are very patient. They'll stay with you for years if they have to, but sooner or later, they're going to ramp it up. And the way they do it is, if you have certain fears, they bring people into your life to trigger those fears because they know what's in your soul. So they deliberately give you triggers. They give you triggers to make you afraid. And that's how they get it to grow. It gets bigger. If you're a spirit-filled Christian and you're born again, there is no fear of death. If you have fear of dying, like Solomon did in Ecclesiastes 12, Wow, something's wrong. It's a soul issue. It's not a spirit issue. The spirit man's great, right, Ron? The spirit man's perfect, but there's something wrong in your soul. It's a fear, fear of the future, a fear of failure, a fear of dying, a fear of being broke, a fear of never being loved, a fear of never loving someone. Everybody wants to love someone. Everybody wants to be loved. It's human nature. And if you're a Christian, and you've got the Holy Ghost, and you have these fears, something's spiritually wrong with you. Because you are not only loved by God, but you are, He likes you too. Let's pray. Father God, just confess that fear right out loud. You have to confess it out loud. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I have this fear in my soul, and I've had it for years. It does not belong in there. It does not belong in you. I'm asking you right now, Lord, to forgive me. Fearful thoughts, fearful behaviors. I repent of it right now, Lord. I repent of it right now. And I lay this fear, these negative thoughts on the altar. I lay them down right now. And I am a going to pray fervently, fervently against these demons of fear. I'm going to fervently pray for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Yes. Avails months, much. And I am a righteous man in my spirit. My spirit is perfect, like Robert said. The Holy Spirit has washed me in my spirit, man. But I've got these demons attacking my soul. And it's causing me pain, emotional pain. It's taking up mental time of thinking about things I should be using to think about things of the Lord and something productive and I'm wasting it on fear thoughts and these negative fear emotions are bothering me. They're pushing me. They're giving me anxiety. I'm getting, I'm getting phobic. I'm getting neurotic. I'm developing paranoia. It's all from Satan. It's all from Satan and I renounce it now. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth month. And I command this evil spirit. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I am a born again Christian. I will not receive fear demons anymore. I will come against you with the blood that Jesus shed. I will come against you with the cross of Calvary. And I command you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command you in the name of the Lord. I have had it. I have had it. And I command you to come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Fear thoughts. Come out of my brain. Spirit of fear. Come out of my body. Come out in Jesus' name. Right now. Fear of death. I command you to come out. Fear of old age. I command you to come out. Fear of losing my health. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind your power. 
I bind your power. And I command you, you wicked spirit of fear. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fear of death. Demon of death. Come out. Fear of old age. Fear of losing my health. Come out. Fear of losing my health. Come out. Come out of me. Right now. Come out now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Get out of there. Come out of right now. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. Come out of there. Stop fighting it. Come out of that body right now. Fear, come out of here. Get out of there. Go, go. Leave this Fear, come out. Come out of me. Get out of my head. Go. Come out. I said, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Fear of going broke. Fear of going broke. Fear of never being healed. Fear of never being healed. I repent of it. Come out. Fear of never being loved. Fear of never dying an old maid. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Fear of dying alone. Fear of dying alone. Get out of my head. Get out right now. Come Get out. Come out, Jesus. Come Get out of my head. Buzzy. Buzzy, come out of my head. Fear of dying alone. Fear of another divorce. Fear of going back on drugs. Get out of that body quicker. Come out quicker. What are you doing in there? Hey, let him go. Come out. Let him go. Let him go. Get out of his head. Come out. Come out of there. Get out of there right now. Stop fighting back. Come out. Stop fighting. Stop fighting him. Come out of him. Right now. Get out of that body right now. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Satan, come out now. Go. Come out now. Go. Stop jerking me and come out. Get out of my head. Come out of there. Quickly. Come out right now. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Here he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Man, mind control. Fear of dying sick as a dog. Fear of dying alone. Fear of losing my health. Fear of no one loving me. Fear of dying in a restaurant drooling over crackers alone. Come out. Come out. Get out of here right now. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Get out of my head. I told you to keep coming out of there. Hurry up. Keep coming. Come out now quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Quickly, quickly, come out. Come out right now. Get out of my head right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There he is. Come out. Come out of there. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out. Come out. Fear of being alone. Fear of dying alone. Fear of dying with illnesses and sicknesses. Fear of dying on a respirator. Fear of dying with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Come out. Fear of having Alzheimer's. Come out. Fear of Parkinson's. Come out. Right now, Buzzy, come out. Get out. Come out now. Good. Come out now. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Go. 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 Get out of my body right now. Demon of lust, come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Spirit of lust, come out of there. Lust for food, go. Low self-esteem, go. Spirit of rejection, go. Fear of criticism by others. Go. Come out. Rejection. Go. Get out of my head right now. I told you to go. Sorrow and misery. Come out of there right now. Sorrow and misery. Come out. Fears. Fear of my future. Fear of finances. Go. Fear of never being loved. Fear of men. Go. Fear of it all. Get out of my head right now. Come out. Quick. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. Sorrow and sadness. Griefs over losses. Let your tears go. Come on. Let your tears go. There it is. That's the anointing on you. Go. There it is. Come out right now. Come out. Sadness. Come out. 
Come out of his throat. Come out of his throat right now. Spirit, come out quickly. Come out. Come out of there quickly. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Get out of there. Go. Go. Fears. Childhood fears. Rejection. Come out. Fear of using again. Fear of drinking again. Fear of drugs. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Come out. Fear of failing. Fear of never being delivered. Fear of never being delivered. Come out of me. Go now. Food demons, come out. Go. Fear of dying of diabetes. Fear of dying of diabetes. Fear of losing my feet. Fear of losing my mind. Fear of Alzheimer's. Fear of Parkinson's. Satan, lose your home. Come out. Fears, come out. Using food to block fears. Go. Using food as a comfort. Come out. Go. Come out in Jesus' name. Every bad man, go. Every verbally abusive male, come out of there right now. Get out of the body right now. Every critical person, every critical man, everybody, come out now, go. Come out now, go. Out. Out. Come out of there, you man hater. Come out right now. Go. Hold that. Hold that. Come out. Go. Come out. Go. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Go. Come out. Go right now. Get out of there. There it goes. Come out. Every ugly man. Every rotten husband. Everybody you ever... What you need? What's that? Uh, what do you need? Poverty and not be a mom. Stand up with it. Stay right there. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of there. You're not done. Come out. Lord, I want you to forgive. What's your name? Tim. Father, I want you to forgive Tim. He has made so many bad choices over there. It's unbelievable. And he doesn't like himself, and he's hard on himself because he's failed so much. And the Holy Ghost never fails, and so he's going to turn his life over to the Lord. Come out of there! Come on, buddy. He's going to turn his life over to the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus. Go, go, drive him out. Sit right there. Drive him out. Go. Go! Come on! Come on! Come on, Eric. Close your eyes. He's going to turn his life over to the Lord. Come on! Come on! And all the adultery, and all the lust, and all the porn, all the cursing, swearing, all the failures, all the frustration, the anger that goes with poverty, the self pity that goes with poverty. All of it, come out. In the name of Jesus. Fear. Come out. Get out. Come out of body quickly. Come out quicker. Quickly come out. Satan, lose your hold quickly. Come on. Come on, ladies. You got low self-esteem and insecurities, and you're afraid. The demon that makes you afraid to come get prayer. That is a coward spirit. Hey, you were doing great praying there. You are fantastic. Come on, keep going. Thank you. Come on. What's the what's the regrets? Let them go. The regrets. Come on. Regrets. A wasted years. Yeah. Wasted years. The regrets. God's going to restore them. Fear of poverty of the future. Fear of failure. Thank you, Jesus. Fear your fears. I repent of it. I repent. I repent of it right now. Fear of failure. And I command that spirit of fear to come out. Get out of my stomach. Come out of my chest. Get out of my head. You spirit of fear, come out now. Come out now. All right, ladies, come down here now. You've got insecurities and you're afraid to get prayed for. Okay, come down here and I'll turn my mic off. And I'll pray for you down here. Hurry up. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. 
but of power and love and a sound mind. The Greek word for fear in that verse of Timothy is dalia. It means cowardice. And it comes in during childhood. Cowardice comes in during childhood. That fear spirit. And the person is afraid to come for help because they're embarrassed. They don't want anybody to see them. They don't want anybody to see them. But we turn the lights down here so no one can see you on the YouTube. And you can have some visual privacy. If you'll come down right now, just step out by faith. Step out by faith. Repent of it. Just repent of it. Lord, I repent of being a coward. I repent of being afraid. I repent of being afraid. I repent of living with fear of thoughts in my mind. Fear of thoughts in my mind. God, forgive me. God, help me. Come on now. Here, I'll pray with you. Ready? Romo Shabasha Drefo. Rero Shandre Moshava. Ola Vesheke. Let me pray for my dad so we can go home. Pray for who? My dad. Is that your dad? Yeah, what do you need? Uh, I got the third one that I've never been in love. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your real dad? Okay, did, uh, did you get hurt or abused as a kid? I, no, I didn't mean him, yeah, anybody. Uh, I don't recall. When my mother, there was some. Uh, she what did she do to you? My mother, how's she doing? What'd she do to you? Uh, she would get angry with my sister and verbally uh, abuse her. Yeah, did you, she abuse you? No. She never laid a hand on me physically. Was she, were you hurt seeing her trash your sister? Yes. Was your sister older? She's um, my age. She's your age? Yeah, my sister. Twins? Yes. And uh, did you ever make amends with your mother later? Um, I forgive her in my heart. I mean, we have a, what I think is a healthy relationship right now. Uh, after that, did you get a bullied in school? No. And have you been married or divorced? No. Okay. And then, do you have any sense of rejection now? Um, yes. I have almost had my first girlfriend in college. And, um, she was um, she was a Mormon. I'm not denominational. And um, because of that, uh, I almost, uh, I actually fell away towards the end of college. And I got saved the week before Easter this year. But because of that experience. Um, are you a new Christian? Yes. Oh, you are? Yes. Oh. Will you send me an email when you get home? Sure. Because I got something I need to send you. A little guide for a new Christian. Sure. Mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Now, what was your mother's name? My mother's name is Barbara. Barbara. Okay. What's your name? Peter. Uh, okay. Close your eyes. Sure. Lord, I got Peter standing here, and uh, his mother hurt him when he was young. She was, she was very hard on his sister, and he loved his sister. He still loves her. But a wound in his soul scarred him from mother. And she needs to leave him tonight because in his soul she gave him rejection and insecurity. And the devil has told him he will never find anybody to love. He will never be married and fall in love. And no one will ever love him. And it all started from his poor mother. She had wounds on her soul. She was a very hurt person. And she had, nobody could help her. Nobody did help her. And she hurt her daughter and she hurt her son and we've forgiven her Lord 100% and he has already forgiven her 100% and so now spirit of fear you must leave this man of God and stop blocking his marriage Can you take a breath of love keep blowing come out mother 
every spirit of criticism from her mother come out. Come out of there right now, devil. Fear of never being loved. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Fear of never being married. Come up. There he is. Come out here. Hurry up. Come up out of there. I know what you're doing. You're blocking. You're blocking relationships. You get his hopes up and then you take them away. I know what you're doing. Come out, devil. Mother, come out right now. Burdens over his father. Come out. I love my dad, but I must release him now and give him to the Lord right this second. Go. Come on. I let my dad go. I turn him over to Jesus. Fear of dying alone. Fear of always being alone. Fear of my parents dying and now I'm alone. Come out right now. Go. Go, spirit. Hurry up. Stop stalling. Mother, I want you out. Come out now. He forgave you. Now you leave you right this second. Hurry up. Come out now. Disappointments with women. Come out right now. Disappointments with relationships. Breaking. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Worry from his father over my future. My dad's worrying about me. Go. He has thoughts he hasn't shared with me. They're negative. He's worried about me because he loves me. Come out right now. Come out right now. Take no thought for your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you. Go right now. I release my mother right now. Everything she said to my sister, I release her. I release the worry and fear I had over my sister. I release my sister from my soul. Go to Jesus. I release my dad from my soul. Go to Jesus. I repent of worrying about my dad. I repent of it. Worry brings in fear. Fear breaks the promises of God. Worry brings in fear. Fear breaks God's promises. I release this from my soul right now. Go. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come on. My sister, my mom, my dad, all of it. Everybody goes tonight. Everybody goes. Is he gone? Get him. Get him. War tongues. War, try your war tongues. Yell. War tongues. Ramasha. Get out of my head. Come on. Get out. Louder. Come out. Come out. Insecurity. Come out. Anxiety around women. Come out. Fear of women. Come out. Fear of women. Come out of there. Satan, you're playing with his mind and know what you're doing. Come out right now. Right now. He repents of it. Being afraid of women. Come out. Okay, hey, uh, stay here. Will you help? Will you uh, help that girl right there? How are you? Wait here. I want to talk to you. Good. Come out of there. Come out. Fear of women. Fear of failing with women. Fear of rejection from women. Like your mother rejected your sister. Fear of rejection. There it is. Keep coughing. He's coming up. That's him right there. There he comes right now. Go. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there. Come out, devil. Fear. Come out. Quickly. Come out of there. Quickly. Come out right now. Quickly. 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 Come out right now. Come out. Come on out. What you need, sweetheart? Um, she was releasing spirits. Or What's wrong with you? 
I I have a blockage, um, disassociation. A blockage of what? Um, like, it's just like a mental disorder. I have. What's an What's the diagnosis? Um, it's like a disassociation. Disassociation. Who, who gave you that diagnosis? The doctor. The doctor. What do they call it? What, what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder? Uh, not, not what like they call it? Uh, dis I, I can't remember the full name. What's the symptoms? Uh, disconnection, disconnection from the body. No and what age did that start? Uh, it started at like 19. 19? But it was progressing, I think. And then uh, when you were young, were you abused? Uh, not, not physical, but like a rigid... Rigid, rigid oh, parents. oh, they were very strict. Very strict. Were they uh, they uh, critical? Uh, they didn't really criticize, but it was like constant fighting and arguing between them or with you and them. Between me and my siblings. Yeah. You and your siblings? No, the siblings against the parents. Oh, okay. They were, they were so, like, there was a lot of tension in the home. Tension, yeah. Girls, fighting. Okay, and then uh, were you were you uh, bullied in grade school? Uh, I'm very sensitive. And I was, uh, I tried to protect myself from that. Very vulnerable. Are you, were you easily hurt? Yes. Very, very sensitive. And even when you were little? Yeah. Have you always been emotional? Uh, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't show the emotion. You buried it? Buried it, yeah. But you had emotion. Was either your parent, was your mother or your dad abused as a kid? Uh, they, they both had, uh, my father had like a strict upbringing, and uh, my mother had like a dysfunctional, dysfunctional, dysfunctional. Uh, there might have been some abuse, I think there was, yeah. Were, were both of them emotional? Uh, Yelling a lot, yeah, or were yes. they were they like you bury their emotions? Yeah, uh, they they showed a lot of uh, anger. I mean, they loved us too, but it was just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you made a mistake, were they uh, on top of it? Yeah, like a lot of nagging. And, yeah. Uh, Who was worse, mom or dad? The father. Your father. Yeah. And then uh, when you were nineteen, when this thing started, prior to that, were you dating somebody? trying to date living in the home I just could never get into a relationship. Have you ever been in love? No. And who were you dating when you were 19 when this started? I wasn't dating anybody, just try, trying to trying to find people to date, but it never worked, never worked out. And is that true to this day? How old are you now? Yeah, I don't, I, well, I'm dating somebody who's here, but I... Is he here now? He's here now, yeah. Okay. Is this on the, on the microphone? Okay. Now, what's your mother's name? Barbara. Barbara, okay, yeah. close your eyes. Take a big breath. What's your name? Cherie. Cherie. All right, Lord Jesus, I'm standing here praying for Cherie. She's a beautiful woman. And I know that when you look at her, that's the way you see her. Beautiful. Lord, I want to apologize to you for her parents. I know they were hurt or wounded people, and they never had anybody to help them. And they took it out on their children. They didn't understand how fear demons work. And then all these disappointments came on her. Relationships, friendships, chronic disappointments. And the devil got into her brain. And she started to disassociate as a defense mechanism. That spirit got in her brain. And she's going to turn her brain over to you right now, Lord. She's going to repent of any sin in her life that she needs to repent of that the devil can use against her. Right now, she's going to repent of it. Any sin, anyone. She's going to stop doing it immediately. She's going to turn her life over to you right now. And that disassociation spirit is going to come out of her head. 
Father, forgive me. For gather me, Lord. Lord, forgive me. Help me. Please forgive me. Should I say that? Yeah, go ahead. If you have anything you need to be forgiven of, go ahead. Good. Is it true? If it's true, it's good. What else should I say? Did you have bad feelings about your mother? Oh, yes. Please forgive me for any bad feelings about my mother, my father. Any grudges that I have. Please, please forgive me. God, help me to release any any bitterness or resentment or hate. Take a big breath. Breathe out. Breathe out of your mouth. Mother. Hey, you heard her prayer. Come out of her. Come out here. Keep breathing. Come out. Right now. Come out. Get out of her brain. Come out of there. Come out. Childhood fear. Mother, come out. Dad, come out of me. I release my parents from my soul. I have a heavenly father. I don't need my parents anymore. Come out. I let them go and I give them to Jesus. Right this second. Go. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out of my lungs. Spirit of fear. Come out of my lungs right now. Come out quickly. Quickly, come out. Get out of my head. Good. Tell him to go. Tell him to go. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of me. Go. Amen. I release my mother right now. Go. Come out of my throat. Come out of my brain. Go. Come out. Go. Out. You speak in tongues? You never spoke in tongues? Oh, okay, just repeat after me. Keshoma. Vakashuma. Bandoria. Did you notice how easy you repeated that? You notice that? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I caught on pretty quick. Yeah, you caught on very quick. Yeah. Now just repeat after me. And this time you add some syllables on your own. Ready? Bolava. Bolava. Bashuma leve. Ora bashandarava. Ola bashandar. Just like that. Good. Perfect. Go. Fill her, Lord. Good. 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 Keep going. Disassociation, go. There it is, right there. Thank you, Jesus. Use different syllables. Good. Very good. Hey, what are you stalling around in there for? Come on, that body right now. Get out quicker. Come out quicker. Come on there, I said. Go. Come out faster. Come out quicker. Come out, Spirit. In the name of Jesus. You can't block her gift of tongue. She has it now. Now you can't block her mind anymore. Come out. Every broken relationship over the years, I command you to come out of her. I break her mother's curse off of her in the name of Jesus. I command it be broken at the count of three. One, two, three, break. Go. Excellent. Keep going. Very good. 
Good. Thank you, Jesus. Great. Did you know you had that in you? Yeah, it's always been in there. You just haven't released it. And you can make it expand and grow by just use different syllables like this. Use different syllables. Try it. Good. 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 Make up your own stuff. No, you just release it. Anything. Different. Any syllable works. There's no there's no right or wrong. Yeah, that works great. I have a lot of cognition problems. Yeah, they're in here. They're, the spirits are in your brain. And the reason I wanted you to get your gift of tongues going is because the demons hate that because they don't know what you're praying. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's why they hate it. Yeah. Stay right here. I need to give you something. Okay. Come out of there. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep going. Come out right now. Evil. Come out. Evil. <laughs> Hey, listen. Yeah. You have what I call mind control spirits. Yes. Uh, they're in your brain, and they're normally in the frontal lobe right yeah, here. See? And it got in from all these chronic disappointments in childhood. What happens is a kid, a kid wants something, and if they keep getting that yeah then they start to develop the demons help them develop mental defense mechanisms so they start checking out and when they become an adult it becomes a severe problem because it affects their concentration their memory their focus and it brings them uh, a sense of feeling like that they, they don't belong they're, they're not where am I? Well, it's disappointments. No, no, figuratively, no. Figuratively, disappointment. This didn't work out. That person didn't work out. That date went down. This man went down. This job went down. Disappointments. What about the anxiety? I felt like anxiety. Yeah, the, the spirit of fear. Fear, they work together. And the anxiety, the fear spirit keeps it going. The fear is kind of like the uh, uh, stuff you put on the f fire. Yeah. The fuel yeah. is the fear. It keeps the fire burning. See? Now, this Bible study I wanted to give you. Uh, you don't need to read it now. But here, these right here, these are all the spiritual benefits of speaking in tongues, what you were just doing. And if you just follow these steps, this... It tells you how to do it? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, it gives you suggestions on steps on yeah. what to do. Okay. Like I just started you and gave you some suggestions on how to start it. Yeah. But here's how to make it mature. And this this uh, gift will break these down and we can get them out, crush them, and get them out next week. Okay. They'll, yeah. they'll fly out. If I work on this? Yes. Come back next week? Yes, if you work on that. Next Friday? This will break them down, so to speak. Okay. Almost like an antibiotic. Great. You yeah, follow me? I'm also going to get like a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Please, call yeah. me. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now, let's go to this level two here. Okay. While you're speaking in tongues, you just kind of speak slowly, and then you put a little hum to it. Kind of okay. like this. Remo shave lo la tore vu remo shave. Remo la vele lo la. Oh no! Yeah, you you know how to do it. I, I was just releasing it. I wasn't doing it. Yeah. Like you were doing your tongues. I was doing it. Pardon? I, I don't know how to start it up again. Yeah, you do. No, you're. This thing's trying to get you to disassociate again. That's a checkout system. Okay. And so what you're telling me, these, those are all lies. He's telling you. He just put that thought in your head. That thought you just had, that you told me. Yeah. Did you, do you remember it? Yeah, you said that. 
that was a lie from him and you've had him in there so long that it seems like your thoughts I don't know what else to do it's just always been there with me I know it yeah yeah absolutely that's a perfect that's a normal statement 100% but if you listen to me and do what I tell you, we can break this thing. Okay. okay? Yeah. So you can start it again really easy. Anything. See? And just relax while you're saying it. And you put a little hum to it. Good. Just like that. Huh? You make up your own thing. Yeah, you just release anything. Anything you release works. The holy because the Holy Spirit's interpreting it. You release it and he interprets it. But the demons don't know what you're saying. If I pray over you in tongues, they don't know what I said, but the Holy Spirit interprets it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> You feel that? Yeah. It's going to take a lot of work. It what, huh? A lot of work. I think it's going to take a lot of work to get the layers. Well, uh, using your term work, that's okay. But really what it is, it's the Bible calls it renewing your mind. Okay. Yeah. And it does take some effort to do that. And you've already done it here. You've you released your gift of tongues partially. Right? Yeah. It's not flowing fully yet, but that'll come later. And you've been listening to me and let me pray for you. And then you were praying for your mother. And so you did a lot of good things down here. Yeah, right. Which is a great start. And then you're going to call me when you get home now, tonight. You're going to call me, right? You want me to call you? Yeah. You can go out and get my card. Okay. Actually, I have it over there. Huh? Oh, you got my card? Okay, great. Perfect. Okay. That, that's. Call yeah, call me. Yeah. Of course, I want to see you. Yeah, I'm a, How soon could I get in for an appointment? Uh, I'm usually a week or two out. Do you do weekends at all? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you work during the day? I don't work. No, I don't work right now. Oh, you don't work? Oh, that's perfect. Well, I'll get you in then during the week then. Great. Okay, call me tonight and then... Leave a message? Then uh, start on this right away, okay? Okay, yeah. It's better to do it when you're alone. Do it when you're alone. Start on that right away. Call me tonight so I can... Get you on the schedule, okay? I love you. What's your name again? Cherie. Okay, love you. Is it out? Okay, get it out of there. Get out of my head. Come out. Come out. You get out of my head right now. Come out right now. Get out of the body right now. Yeah, there it comes. Go. Keep going. Come out. Come out, stomach. Come out. So, Buzzy, come out. What's going on there? How's he doing? Yeah, and what are we going to be working on with you? I'm trying to get this TMJ out. Yeah, that's not it. Well, I got a few things. Let's take a look in there. Okay. And look at a lifetime of disappointments. I have been trying to figure out what I need to forgive or who I need to forgive. Nobody. It's a lifetime of disappointments. Storing up in the soul. A lifetime of people who are supposed to help me but didn't. A lifetime of betrayals. A lifetime of people backing out on me. A lifetime of people stabbing me right square in the back. And these wounds and that soul in there are deep. And the devil tricked you. He said, listen, you're a strong person. You just work your way through it and keep going. You're going to repent of that right now. Father God, I am not a strong person. I am not strong. 
The devil tricked me into thinking that if I just was strong and worked my way through it, I'd be okay. And that was a lie from the pits of hell. He tricked me into carrying burdens and worrying about bad men and friends who would betray me and people who don't change. All these sad burdens in my soul. Demons told me to try to fix everybody and help everybody. But it's time to stop that. Lord, I need help myself. All right, take a big breath. Breathe. Good. Breathe again. Out. Breathe. 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 Lord, I want you to go back in her past and I want you to collect every evil spirit of adultery. I want you to go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Every transfer spirit, there he is, of adultery. Every transfer spirit of somebody who lied to her. Every ugly man who hurt her and used her. There he is. That fear spirit right there. Come out. Come out of her. There he is. He's jumping around in there. Come out of there right now. Come out. The demon that told her she could live with all these wounds and all this sadness and all these failures. He tricked her. He lied to her. She cannot live with it. It's going to end up in a terminal illness. Spirit, you must come out. Spirit of fear. You. Come out of there. Come out. Get out of my body right now. I've had enough of it. You're sick of trying to fix people. Get out of there. Your body never beat your body. Get out of that body right now. Get out of there. Get out of there. There he is. You spirit of fear, you get out of my body. Body dysmorphia. Hating how I look. Come out. Uh, of get out of that body, you demon of eating disorder. Get out of my spine. You occult witchcraft curse, you come off of me right now. Get out of my spine. Get out of my spine right now. I command every spirit of blasphemy that gave me a curse word to come out of my body right now. Every curse word, every second I spent angry at somebody. Come out. Come out of my soul. Anger. Fear. Bad men. Disappointing men. Betraying men. Family members who turned on me. The ones that won't talk to me anymore. The family that rejected me. The man that rejected me. The lovers that turned on me. All these people use my money, use my time, use my life. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Come out of me right now. I release it all in the name of Jesus. All of it. All these wounds. All these bad men. Oh my God, they're all bad. Come out. Come out. All I ever wanted was somebody to love me. And it never happened. The devil stole from me the one thing I always wanted. I just wanted somebody to love me for me. The devil took every one of them away from me. Starting my parents. Go. I'm prepared for not knowing who I was when you did this Christ knowledge. Good. Just repent of it. I am sorry that I looked from you in the wrong way instead of saying you and saying. Come on. Come on. Good. Pray harder. Pray harder. 
I didn't even know. I was so ignorant. I didn't even know who you were. And I, I was so Good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please come back. You can come back. That's easy to fix. That's easy to fix. Sit down. Come on, pray harder. There you go. Let your tears go. Good. Good. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, Lord. God, forgive me. Yes. Flow through her, Lord. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, these are good prayers. Keep going. Come on, let your tears go. You always hold back when you pray. There's nobody looking at you here. Ever, there's nothing to be embarrassed. Yeah, you do. You have an urge in your heart to apologize to God. Just groan it out. Oh. Oh. Romans chapter 8. Groan. Groan it out. There you go. Good girl. Good. Of course you can. You can do all these things. You're an intelligent person. You've got a good heart for people. You've got great potential. But all these rotten wounds. No, you were tricked. You helped people too much. That's a demonic trick. Yeah. It's designed to hurt you. Yeah. Well, I just said she threw it down. It's a wasted investment. You invest all this thing into somebody and then they let you down. It's a trick. You're set up. Yes. Yes. And I think you speak in tongues? I, yeah. Okay. I don't feel anything when I do it. So I always it doesn't wonder, matter. I have the wonder of, am I actually doing it right or am I just oh, doing it? Go ahead and repent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have. I've talked to God about this a lot. No, you. Okay. Father God, you know I'm trying to be obedient to you, and and I've been speaking in tongues because I, I want to be obedient to you, and that I don't have, I don't want, that I have questions in my mind about whether I'm doing it right or not, and, and whether it's real or not, but you know my heart, and you know that I'm just trying to do right and do good by you, and, and I know you know that, so no matter what, we're good, and you like me and you love me, which is totally awesome. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and start speaking. That was a great prayer. Go ahead. Come on. Good. Good. That's good. Now that's legit. Keep going. Now you giggle because you feel you feel insecure. Okay. Just repent of it. No, I said, repent of that. The more you talk, the sicker you get. Just do what I said. Okay. Now, you got a nice gift of tongues there. It works great, but it's a little blocked. Okay. So all we have to do is expand it. So take a big breath and relax. And a girl. Relaxing. Relax your body. And just repeat after me. Go ravasha, go sha vasi, keno ma, keno ma sanda, onda bashege, bekoba, bonda, labashi. Did you notice I was using different syllables? It's not the same three or four. Yes. I switch them. Okay. Now let's try it again. Only you use your language. You use different syllables. Okay. Go rashanda, go labashi leve. Belo Bashandora. Just like that. Good. Bukara Mashivi. Kilo Moshambu. Vonde Vashala. Good. Kola Vashelemi. Kendora Mashandora Shide. Bako Valamo. Good. Andora Moshevele. Belo Baba. 
Ola Vashandarashi, Ora Mashandarava. Okay, perfect, excellent. Now put a little hum to it. Ramo Shavura, Ramo Shavura. Good, hum it out. Sing. Ramo Shavura. Sing it out. Ramo Shavura. Holy Spirit, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, come on up here. Okay, just repeat after me. Kola Vashaka. Beloba. Belobasia. Andoria. Vako. Now, you notice uh, that you were repeating that pretty easy? You notice that? Okay. This time, I'm going to do it, and then you... Uh, put some syllables of your own in there and it can be any syllable so there's no wrong answers don't make them up just release them if that makes any sense I'm not thinking about what I'm saying I'm just releasing it what happened I'm good no? I'm good that's how you're drawing I'm the good. Holy Ghost when you good. sing to him you good. sing God a love good. song that draws his spirit in ready try it again Louder. Good girl. Any syllable, release it. Release. Touch, Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, come in. Thank you, Jesus. I release my gift of tongues now. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Louder. Come on. You're not insecure tonight. Tonight you're taking a break from insecurity. Feel Holy Spirit, touch. Any syllable, there's no wrong answer. Good. Just speak it out by faith, any syllable. Kelo, Vashataram, Boya Babashandi, like that. Kuramashandara Vasidia, Reboshatara Bab, any syllable. Kuramashandara Vari, anyone. Olamashandara Vasidi. Let's try it in English then. Thank you, Jesus. Glory Arios. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Lord. I love you. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Louder. There you go. Good girl. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you. I love you, Lord. Thank you. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Say it. Glory. Arios. Hallelujah. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Good girl. Now you're doing it. Now you're killing it. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. Say it louder. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. Be strong. Louder. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. And I give you the glory, Lord. Louder. Stronger. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Glory to Dios. Glory to Dios. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Son of God. Get out of my body. Every demon of fear, shyness, come out of me. Every spirit of fear and shyness, I command you, come out. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Every wound, come out of my body right now. In the name of Jesus. Leave. Just leave. Leave and go. Come out. There it is. Big yawn. 
the demons are starting to come out. Take another yawn. That's them. Come out. They're starting to come out. Good. Yawn. Big one. Good. Spirit, come out quicker. There you go. Take another yawn. Come out, you rotten devil. Every spirit from an abusive childhood, go. Every demon from his dad, go. Rejection from mother, go. In Jesus' name. Name of Jesus Christ, come out, go. Get out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out of there, you run. There it is. Come out of there right now, you stinking <laughs> demon. Come out of there. Come on right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Go. Get out of there, I said. Come out. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out of my stomach. Come out of my chest. Get out. Come out of my body right now in Jesus' name. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Go. Get out of my feet. Get out of my genitals, you pervert. Come out. Get out of me, you pervert. I bind the power of pornography. I bind your power in Jesus' mighty name. I bind this evil spirit of lust. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Come out. Come out of his kidneys. There he is. Come out of his lungs. Come out, you pervert. I bind chronic masturbation. Get out of there. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out of there. Get out of my body right now. I command the power of pornography. I command the power be broken. Don't break. Pornography, I curse you. I break your power. Go. I break the power of perverted sex, anal intercourse, oral sex. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I break your power. Oral sex, come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Anal sex, I bind your power. Come out in Jesus' name. Pornography, I curse you to failure. Come out of that body right now. The nightmare of lust. Come out. Drugs. I curse you to failure right now. There he is. Take a big yawn. Big one. I, drugs and alcohol. I bind your ugly power. Come out. Eating disorder. Obesity. Anorexia. Bulimia. I curse you to failure. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Keep coughing. Come out. There it goes. Keep coughing. Come out. They're starting to come out. Keep doing it. Come out. Big yawn. Every evil spirit, come out right now. Everyone, big yawn, go. Big yawn, come out right now. Get out of that body. You get out of my body right now. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to die and go to hell. It's not going to happen. Get out of there. Satan, loose your hold of me. There it is. Big yawn. Come out, you rotten spirit. They're coming out right now. They're coming out right now. Come out of my nose. Spirit, come out of my body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to come out right now. Get out of there. Big yawn. Next one. Big yawn. Next one. Come out. Get out of there. I said, I repent of my sin. I'm turning my life over to the Lord. I'm not living in sin anymore. I repent of it. I'm going to get rid of all my rotten friends right now in the name of Jesus. Every sinful friend, I'm going to get rid of them right this second. Go. All of them go. Right now, go. Come out. Keep yawning. Go. There they come. Big yawn. Go. Come out of Jesus' name. Come out of his lungs. Come out of them lungs. Out of them lungs. There he comes. There it is right there. He's coming out right now. Yawning. Those are the weaker demons coming out. We're going to get to the nasty ones in a minute. There they are. Keep coughing. Get out of my lungs. You pervert. You pervert. Every person I hurt in my past, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Every person I stabbed in the back, I ask you to forgive me. The Bible says, I will reap what I sow. I had people stabbing me in the back because I stabbed other people in the back. Forgive me for hurting other people, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. Come out, you rotten devil. Come out of there. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out. There you go. Big yawn coming up. Get out of her back. Come out of there right now. Come out of her body right now. Go. Right now. Come out of there. Go. You get out of my body right now. Hurry up and get out of there. Come out right now. I command you, you evil spirit, come out of me right this second. I want this monster out, the fear demon, the one that's dug in. There you go. There goes another one. There it goes. Come out of there. Go. Go now. Go. There it is. Good. Keep yawning. Keep yawning. Those are the weaker demons coming out. We see somebody yawning. 
that means the anointing is on them and the spirit is now moving out the weaker spirits they yawn out of there and they start there's another one it's coming out one after the other they yawn out okay I know that sounds weird before I got into deliverance I thought it was weird too now it's just like another thing yawn them out just take a big breath and they'll come right out do it by faith and they will come out you cannot leave evil spirits in your body because they turn they cause terminal illnesses later in life they work on you for decades they give you diabetes autoimmune diseases they give you all kinds of illnesses and then they make you die alone and broke and that is not what God's called you to do is to die alone and broke that is not God's will for your life now just repent of this if there's any sin in your life you've got to confess it and repent of it anything did you hurt somebody did you dishonor your parents if you dishonored your parents you dropped the curse on you you got a curse on you a curse of poverty a curse of bad health a curse of witchcraft anything can fall on you when you curse disobey dishonor and degrade your parents come out devil keep yawning there he goes glory to God when you see somebody have a huge yawn and their jaw opens real wide that's a demon coming out that's a spirit coming out that means the person has the anointing there was another one coming out of that guy that means the person has the anointing and the Holy Spirit's on them and they're coming out there's one coming out of her both these two they're yawning out right now that's the that's the first layer of the spirits being yawned out that's a very good sign that means that the person has the anointing of the Holy Ghost demons will not come out without the Holy Ghost anointing he is the only person they fear they do not fear human beings they find them as garbage the Holy Ghost now that's a horse of a different color they fear him demons fear the Holy Ghost and if you'll repent of your sins the devil will get his face kicked in in your life if you change and repent the Holy Spirit will go with you a hundred percent every step of the way just repent of it just confess it it's easy to do father I insulted my mother when I was 12 and when I was 15 I yelled at her and when I was 18 I told her to go to hell and that brought a curse on me and I apologize for that and I repent of it and I ask for your forgiveness I confess it and I repent of it that's how you repent just do what I just did and if you pray like that sincerely I'm telling you the Spirit of the Lord will jump all over you he loves to forgive people but he won't do anything if they won't confess it Kill food in my body right now, you stinking spirit of fear. You, how dare you take a breath and blow? Get out of there. Come on out right now. Lift out of me right now. Lift out of me. Lift out of me. Lift out. Come on. I hate your guts. I hate you. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. You can't get rid of the demons or the devil if you don't hate them. They take it as an invitation to stay. I hate you. I hate you. You got to be like Jesus and grab the whip and go into the temple of your body and drive out the money changers. Get out of my body right now. Get out of my body right now. I mean it. Get out of my body right now. Satan, I bind your power. Every ugly man that ever touched this woman, I bind your transfer spirits. All these bad men. I place a curse of failure on every month, every year, every decade of adultery and fornication. I command you to fail now. Come on. Every heartbreaking loss, every amazing disappointment, I break it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every rejection from every man, every woman, every family member, all of them. Every time they rejected me, I release it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Out. Come out of me right now. I told you to come out now. You get out of my body right now. 
Come on now, just keep praying. This is an easy place to pray in because the anointing is in this building. We prayed a lot of years to get the anointing in this building. So when you come in here and sit, you can even sit and pray under the anointing and you wouldn't believe what will happen to you. Lots of good things happen. The anointing, the Holy Ghost didn't show up here by chance. We rolled out the welcome mat for him, the red carpet. We made sacrifices for him. We wanted him here. We prayed for him to be here. We begged him to come here and bring the precious blood of Jesus and the broken body of Christ. We've had thousands of people delivered here and at the old house of healing. Thousands. That means the Holy Ghost is here. Demons won't leave unless they're driven out. Demons will not leave unless they're driven out. If they do leave on their own, they always come back and bring more with them. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, you've got the anointing. You were yawning out them spirits. You have it. Yeah. Now you crank it up and fight harder. Here's how you do it. I'll show you. Watch me. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I bind this evil spirit in my body. I bind your power. Fear. I bind you and I command you to come out of me. Get out of my body. Get out. See how I did that? Did you watch me? Try it. Yeah, just get mad. See, if you don't get mad at the devil, he takes that. He takes that as a. The way he looks at it is you like him. He's a pervert, and that's the way he sees it. He thinks you like him. If you're not mad at him and you're okay with what he's doing in your life, and you say, "Well, I just kind of don't. I'm kind of mad, or I'm kind of upset about it. Or I really don't no. like it." That's not good enough. You don't understand, Christian. This is a war. This is a war. Christianity is a war. And the spoils are you. The spoils are you. Either the Holy Ghost gets you or the demons get you. There is not a third option. And you decide who wins. Not God. You decide who gets you. The demons or the Holy Ghost. It's all up to you. God obeys free will. He permits it. He allows it. If you don't want to do anything, the Holy Spirit will allow you to do nothing. But the devil will not. He'll come looking for you. He'll hunt you down like a dog. And he will come for you. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the, hit the button at the top, the teaching button. Go to the teaching button. Pick out a Bible study that applies to you. Go to the self-deliverance button. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you the self-deliverance list. Yeah. Next week, I believe, is the seminar. On sex, no, no children at that one. That's going to be a little touchy. See you next week. Love you. Next week is a seminar, seven o'clock. It's free, and it's on uh, human sexuality. And I will see you then.